Paul Slayton. And we got Daniel again. Danny G. Garza for another episode. This is a different one. We brought Jordan in, so we're going to talk about this one. It looks like I'm wearing the same thing, but it's a totally different day. It's a whole different day. I only have one wardrobe. Well, you know what? It's green screen. It's just a whole green shirt. Yeah, it's green screen, green so we're good. I, I'm going to change the shirt sometime during the middle of the show. Whoa. So, yeah. Yeah. It's from this side. From this side. Show for from this side. <laughs> so, yeah, we brought him in because um, part of his, uh, we talked about last podcast, he does uh, mantra and does cards. He made his own deck. He didn't bring it in, but now it's in. And then Jordan, it's we there. talked about it before, he does his own, like, he learned how to read. And what else did you learn, Jordan? There's a lot of stuff, I guess. Like I, I've, like I've, I've read tarot cards for about like, I think it was 15, 15 years ago. Oh wow! Yeah, so uh, I've been doing that. I've been, I research a lot of stuff. I've uh, delved into like voodoo as well. <coughs> Just like read up on it. Went to New Orleans. Even did more research in New Orleans. He almost got us. He almost got us canceled from Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I went. <laughs> I also went to Catholic school for like twelve years. So I know all about that too. Yeah. You should have started with that. <laughs> know, right? No, no, no. He goes, he goes for the best. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, so, and I, nothing, nothing surprises me. And I'm like, and I'm also very, I don't know why, I always have like a weird fixation with cards just in general. I play, because I also play card games competitively. I've, I play Magic the Gathering competitively. And uh, I played Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively as well. Okay. Yeah, oh, so wow. there's another reason why, like, I thought bring him in because you guys, you guys, you do um, um, MCing. Oh, I was also but a he does commentator. He does commentating for games for yeah. video games. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, you're, you're, you, I have to bring you to my show and interview you on my show now. <laughs> you're, now you got interesting. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, now I'm, I'm interesting. Oh, five minutes ago, I was like, okay, let's entertain this whole, <laughs> yeah. this whole show. See? But now you're cool. <laughs> okay. uh, wait, wait, he's not it cool. Took, it took a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Minute. I, was I was like, like <laughs> I don't know where we're going with this. But like, yeah. like, who's, who's this guy? We, we, we know how our parents are. Like, my, my kid is so cool. I'm sure he is. Well, you mm-hmm. thought I was cool, so that's hard. Mm-hmm. See? I thought you were interesting. No, you said cool. He said cool. He said cool. That's crazy. But I'm not cool. I'm interesting still. Yes. <laughs> On an interesting way, I'm interesting. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, that's a, that's actually pretty cool stuff. Yeah. By the way, we, we didn't meet each other until like two No, years. literally right now. Yes. No. Like, I sat down. You haven't yeah. even met him yet. No, I haven't. Hey, even... Jordan. Oh, this, yeah, this, yeah, I feel like it's a this this is saying this, Jordan. This is an arranged marriage thing. You are, you are now going to be together. Okay, cool. We're, we're now friends. Yeah, like, yeah. And then you go like, well, how old are you? Yeah. Like, how old are you? 30. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to be 30 in April. Because you look like you're 20. Nice. Yeah. And I was like, uh, how much can I say? My, if, for those of you that listen to the past episode, yeah. uh, my tongue gets me in trouble. Well, nah. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> that's another show. Yeah. That's, that's when wild. he changes his shirt, we'll do that show. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, cool stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I haven't even really told like the podcast that I do all that stuff. They just know I do this podcast. No, well, they did. You uh, talked about doing the um, oh yeah I do like not, not a, we did a little bit on tarot cards I forgot who it was with you did a little show on that with David oh yeah and then we did a little bit on commentating because you did that with Ken and oh, yeah, I do that Kevin with right Kevin Ken Kevin yeah and then you did um, the cool part you haven't brought that up yet because you're not we haven't shown that's right cool yet but I'm not yeah we're gonna work on that we got to talk about that being cool uh, yeah. so, so you're not that. technically cool <laughs> no, 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 we, have, we haven't talked about it, it. we you're haven't talked about it never been no cool. no we haven't even talked about him being interesting not yet no so we, <laughs> once we talk about those then he's cool and interesting yeah <laughs> unique yeah, in a word in, 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 yeah, in a way in a way probably some of his friends think he's thinks he's unique yeah, yeah. some, some of, of his friends yeah. yeah i think i think ken thinks you're unique that's why he hangs around with you no that's not why ken hangs around no Ken hangs around with me because I give him housing and he he happily has to in Taiwan. <laughs> that might be the cool part then. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm cool. Yeah, because you're missing your bud. You're gonna stay in my house, but I'm your best friend from now on. <laughs> what? We're friends now. now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let me see cards. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here it is. This we're gonna. He can't just show stuff. You gotta kind of explain as you talk because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of visual. Sure. So for those of you that listened to the past show. Um, like two of them a rerun um, 
So I've been doing card reading since 2012. Okay. And in 2016, I became a Reiki master. Okay. And then during the lockdown, I I wanted to... OCD. Oh, no, this is this so you can put the cards because you're gonna oh, put them. Oh, yeah. So then, then put them on the bottom, so we're, we're gonna go crazy. Um, <clears throat> Twenty twenty lockdown, I was able to work it out that I got my uh, coaching certificate. Okay. So I became a life coach. I had my Reiki master's certificate, and I wanted to find a way to combine both things. And mm. I started to look into. I'd already been practicing what I do now with oracle cards okay but i used to carry around like seven or eight decks of cards everywhere i went mm -hmm. and it got a little heavy i was like oh, i need to work something else out so my former publisher when i wrote my book uh, a couple of, several years ago mm -hmm. was encouraging me to create my own deck of cards mm -hmm. and i kept telling him like you can't just create a deck of cards it's not and he's like how do you think people who make the deck cards. cards that you use yeah. now did it and i'm like oh yeah, yeah. If you put it that simple. Yes, like, how dare you? <laughs> and so as I was studying the different modalities of spiritual coaching and life coaching, I was particularly drawn to helping people be better. Like, how can people... Like, fully improve on themselves. Yeah, so it's not so much about... I didn't want to do coaching where I was just like, you're awesome, never change, you're yeah. perfect. Yeah, that, that's it, cap. Because <laughs> obviously you're coming to a coach because something is blocking you or mm -hmm. there's a barrier in your life. And I thought, how can I do that with the deck of cards but mm -hmm. still include the logical? So mm -hmm. I've created the alignment. Okay. So the alignment is about... Identifying, acknowledging, and breaking down barriers that are holding you back personally or professionally. Okay. Because there's seven chakras, the cards come in seven colors. Yeah. So there's 70 cards divided in uh, seven sections, 10 cards each. And each section also, if you see, there's a root chakra, mm -hmm. but there's also the foundation, which is part of life coaching. Yeah. So not only do you get the life coaching, but you get the spiritual coaching in one. Okay. So each card has a different word that affects that level. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. And then as we work with clients, and I've been doing this now for just under a year, mm -hmm. and people are kind of getting... By the way, this particular deck is my deck, and it's got coffee stains on it now, so it's you know it's been used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been used a bit. And... Um, oh, yeah, also I've been in... I English and Spanish. And yeah, English and Spanish. I was, was going to say... I was like, because being Latino... I understand that as immigrants, as Latinos, um, and whatever that brings with you, there are barriers that we need to break down. And Jordan, he's going to call you white, first of all. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, he's right? going to call you white because he calls me white. Uh -huh. He says I'm I, white. I called you a white truck driver. <laughs> yeah, white truck driver. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Then if I'm half you, and my, and my mom's hella white. Yeah. So that means I'm really, <laughs> yeah, right. I'm really white. Yeah, I'm really white. Do not adjust your streets, folks. <laughs> they, they are white. <laughs> um, so if I mean if you want we can do just a mini I am down quickie <laughs> <laughs> all right sure sure on camera folks uh-huh okay so we don't have pen and paper so we're not gonna need it right now it's fine sorry um so I'm just gonna let, you're gonna have to use your your brain a little bit yeah okay okay so I want you to take one quick second just close your eyes and take a deep breath and you know about connecting to the energy. And for those of you listening, when people tell you connect to the energy, what we're really asking you to do is feel the air, the sounds, the way your clothes feel on you, the way the headset feels on your head, your feet on the ground, and how you're connecting to the energy and the people in the room mm. and my voice. So for the folks listening, whenever somebody says, connect to the energy, that's what we're asking you to do. Just feel everything around you. How does it feel? Because there's going to be a difference in the energy when we're done with whatever session we're helping you work through. So take another deep breath, Jordan. And let it out really slow. There you go. And as you do that, I want you to think about a barrier that you believe is part of your life right now that is stopping you from growing personally or professionally. 
just one thing, keep it in your mind. Don't tell me, but let me know when you're ready. For those of you who are following, if you were in person, um, or if, you're, if you want to follow along in this quickie session, uh, pull out a pen and paper and write down your barrier. You're thinking, how is this going to help me? Well, we've tried this. And if, if you're listening to this today, and there's a barrier that's blocking you today, these cards might help you out a little bit. Yeah. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, ready, ready. So we're going to keep that barrier in your head. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about it at the end. Mm -hmm. So number one, we're going to pull a card. These are the... These are the red cards. These are the foundation or the root chakra. Mm -hmm. This is everything and anything that anybody has ever said to you in your life goes in your foundation or your root chakra. Okay. So all the negative and the good stuff. For those of you, imagine Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. She has a yellow brick road. Yeah. You have a red brick road. And every brick is something that anybody has ever said to you. And the negative stuff is what we trip on every time we try to make a decision or move forward. We trip mm -hmm. on the negative. So in order to have a more clear path, we need to remove the negative bar barriers or the negative blocks and replace them with something positive. Make sense? All right, so pull one of the cards and flip it over. Safety. Cool. So what is it? And we're gonna keep adding to this. It'll make more sense as we go along, but there's mm -hmm. something in feeling safe in who you are, where you are, and people, places, and things around you that mm -hmm. is blocking you right now from breaking down the barrier that it's in front of you. Does that make sense? That's fair. Okay. Yeah, that is fair. So are we good so far? Yeah. All right. Number two. Number two is balance or um, your solar, I'm sorry, your sacral chakra. Mm -hmm. So this is bringing the balance into your light. So go ahead mm -hmm. and pull one from there. And this is... Joy. Are we finding the balance here? I'm going to... To this yeah, video, yes. so it'll make more sense as we go along. So, bringing joy into your life or joy into your life is that off balance at the moment that is causing you to feel affected by your safety that's affecting your barrier. Does that make sense? I guess so. Okay, and it'll make more sense as we go yeah. along. Okay, all right, I'm understanding the connection. Okay, number three. Mm -hmm. Number three is your solar plex or your power. Yeah. And this is where we have our connection with ourselves. I'll take the one that's hiding. Sure. Mood. So, how does the mood, when it comes to your power and you, affect the joy that comes into your life, or the balance of, that's affecting how you feel safe? And for those of you listening, um, safety is not just about physical safety, it's about mental, physical, and spiritual. Mm -hmm. Safety. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Are we good so far? Yeah. Okay. Number four. Should be like the hands, right? Um, this one. <laughs> Number four is your heart and your intake. This Conexion. is the information that comes into your life. So let's flip that over so that you... <laughs> or do you speak Spanish as well? I do. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So your connection. So the connection to your heart, this is the information that comes into your heart. For everybody listening, imagine that you have a little receptionist that lives in your heart. It sits mm -hmm. there all the time, and it takes in the information that comes from people, places, and things in your life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we connect to the information that's coming to us, and sometimes we don't. Mm -hmm. How is that affecting you, affecting your mood, because that's your power, throwing your joy off balance to make you feel safe or unsafe in the situations? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm making it. Are we good so far? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Number five, and we're almost through with this, folks. Number five is... Lie or manipulate someone? That's, That's crazy. Good. You're you're upsetting the chakra right yeah. now. And like, I, like I, I was feeling like very yellow right now, and you just brought a whole... It's purple. Purple. Like, you, know, <laughs> you brought a whole red energy to that. You're like, so just... purple right now. <laughs> so this right. is your voice my, or your throat. Yeah, my intention. Nice. So this is, and for you, we, we, you probably know this, but for folks, our voice and our throat chakra is mm -hmm. how we speak to ourselves first. Mm -hmm. If you speak to yourself negatively, then you attract people talking to you negatively. If, mm -hmm. you, if you're positive in the way you speak about yourself, people will see you in a different light. You yeah. set the tone, right? So how is the intention that you put in, the, in your voice towards yourself affect your connection Which, to other people? Which affects the mood. Affect the mood, throws off the joy, it makes you feel safer in the situation. 
Uh-huh. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Are we good? Yeah. All right. I think I'm winning Jordan over, folks. Just so you know. Not hard. Number six. It's not hard. Is <laughs> it's crazy. It's calling me easy. He said it, not me, folks. That's crazy. Number six oh, is your second. third eye. This is your brow, your third eye. Uh-huh. Usually this is where our visions, our manifestations, our future, our goals, our dreams. So what is your perception of where you're going in your life? What the future holds for you? Mm-hmm. Affecting the, the intention you have in your voice, the way you connect with the people, places, and things around you, mm-hmm. that throws off your moods, off balances your joy, and affects your safety. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are we good so far? Yep. And we're on the final one. Final one. So this is your crown chakra, yeah. Your connect. Yep. This is our connection to life, the universe, God. This is where they drop off the messages. Understanding. Right? So our understanding of how life, the universe works. Mm-hmm. So, if I may? Yes. So the way that these work in the end, of course, I'm giving you, this is usually an hour, hour and a half session. Yeah. So we're really going through this. Really we're, we're speed running it. Yes. So, and I'm talking as from your energy. My, yeah. sif- my safety is affected by the balance of the joy that comes to my life, mm-hmm. which affects my moods, my connection to the people, places, and things around me. Mm-hmm. By setting the right intention in the way I speak to myself, I can have a clear perception and understanding of the messages that come to me. Okay. Yeah. So it's like, if I'm trying to connect it all together, um, whether or not I feel safe, like I, I'm, I feel like I need to be safe in order to have like a sense of joy, like whatever makes me happy in general. And my happiness affects how I interact with other people through my mood. Yeah. So, and my mood kind of determines whether or not I want to make a connection with anybody. Like, whether or not I'm going to be standoffish or whether I'm not going to, um, like, actually just try to talk to them, see how they are. Yep. Just get the premise of this podcast, trying to figure, hear out their story. And um, so, with that, the intention, that's going to be the interesting one, I guess. Because um, I guess my intention is I'm I never really intended to be bad, but I always uh, I like uh, playing devil's advocate or doing all that type of stuff just to just to see how they react in order to yeah. get my perception. Hey, that makes sense. That makes sense. So like I I, I kind of throw off my intention purposefully in order to see how they perceive it, and that's how I understand people. Okay. So, can I ask you now, if you don't mind, what your barrier was? Um, I guess my barrier right now is just outside forces, in a way, you know? Um, things that I am not in control of. Ah. Yeah. Gotcha. Like the sense of needing a control. So, understanding that sometimes you have no control over anything mm-hmm. can change the per- your perception of the situation. Mm-hmm which can adjust your intention of how you use your voice or your words Mm -hmm. to better make a connection, to adjust your moods so you can find the joy and feel safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense, actually. So, like, uh, me knowing that I, there are forces outside of control, and uh, I I usually kind of let that flow through, like, just go with the flow but so there are some there might be some things that are currently just outside of my control that are just actively um let's say the word fucking me (laughs) yeah so uh and that's messing up my my mood which is why i feel currently not as safe as i want to be yeah and for, I mean, like I said, for everybody, safety doesn't just come in like, oh, I'm in a safe space, mm-hmm. but am I mentally safe and yeah. spiritually safe? Mm-hmm. Not just physically. I mean, we can be physically safe from harm, mm-hmm. but our brains take us into these dark places mm-hmm. or our spirit is so bankrupt that nothing can make us feel good. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And definitely, I mean, I hate the word definitely, but... <laughs> 
for sure, if I don't feel mentally, physically, or spiritually safe, my joy, there's no joy in what I'm doing because I'm yeah. doing everything because I feel like I have to, which is totally going to mess with my mood. Mm -hmm. So now I'm not going to connect with Jordan right because I'm doing this out of force, mm -hmm. instead of want. And my intention, though, and like you said, the words that I use, mm -hmm. how, how many times do we, do we work with somebody or we're around people who are so freaking passive aggressive mm -hmm. and you're like, you're just sucking the joy out of this situation. Sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'll do that. Well, we all deal with that. I am not passive aggressive. <laughs> that's, that's wild. As the lightning strikes. Yes. <laughs> Shut up. Don't look at me like that. But anyway, so. Hella passive aggressive. But this is what we did. He's also aggressive, but he's passive aggressive. Passive aggressive. Uh, but this is what I do with, with folks, but we do, uh, it's an hour long, we, we break more into it. Mm -hmm. And then folks come back for the uh, a bigger package that I sell, mm -hmm. where we go step by step. So we go every color, one color at a time. Yeah. So every two weeks, we meet up for an hour, and we break down every section. And okay. usually it takes four months to get to the whole thing. And that's that's my deck of cards. So it's the alignment. I like it. Yeah, thank you. And uh, from what I remember, it's like all the... The chakras are like actually like the physical parts of your body, like the root is like below your feet, like the soles of your feet, and then the sacral. Where's the sacral chakra? So the way it starts is the a lot of people mm -hmm. work with the root at the bottom, but mm -hmm. at the bottom of your feet, but it, it's literally at the bottom of your uh, tailbone. Yeah, that's where the root chakra is, um, and then that. your sacral chakra is on your hips. The hips don't lie. Mm -hmm. And then this, the solar plexus is in your belly button. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. obviously the heart chakra, yeah. your heart, your throat chakra, mm -hmm. and then the, your the brow, and, which more people all know is the third eye, mm -hmm. and then your crown chakra. Yeah. So everything is right between your torso and your head. Yeah. But, yeah. The, but the reason the cards have a logic side and a spiritual side... is so that you could connect those two understandings together to give them not just the physical, but a... a uh, spiritual exactly understanding as well so if you're more logical we talk about the connection and the foundation mm -hmm. if you're more spiritual we talk about the crown and the root chakra and the reason it's called the alignment is because we're going to find out where your alignment is mm -hmm. when people tell you jordan you need to get centered but nobody tells you exactly where mm -hmm. that center is yeah we come and tell you you tell us how logical or how spiritual you are Mm -hmm. that's your alignment so that when you go home you know where your balance is yeah because if i tell you in order to be aligned you have to be 50 50 but that is not your true nature mm -hmm. you can do that while you're sitting with me because i'm helping you organize that or, or control that but once you go home mm -hmm. it's going to go back to your normal and you're going to be like well everything he just taught me is not going to work yeah that's true which is not not Please, for everybody, not to put down anybody else's modalities. That's just that the way the alignment works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So this is this, this is my alignment card. I like it. Thank you. I like it. Welcome back. Yeah, that's what he does. So there you go. That's a little taste of what um Daniel Daniel G Garza. Does. Thank you. Thank you. We're, we're, it's my full name. <laughs> my full legal name is Daniel G Garza. So. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so and and then of course I always work with other cards and other people's cards, and so yeah. so he does life coaching and this and some other stuff. So he needs clients. In case you guys are out there, okay. so if people need help. If you're missing something, if you feel off balance, if your life isn't, I kind of feel off balance right now. Because your foot hurts. Because my foot's yeah. messed up. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so kind of off balance. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to. If you, if you see the way that he walks, it's like yeah, a little hobble. Yeah, so I'm, off I'm a little off balance right now. It kind of got me on balance a little bit with that, but <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm not even. Going you know, he's kind. Of, he's really off balance. If you'd watch, if you watched the last podcast. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. He, I, uh, uh, he had crutches, and um, I was sitting in a chair. There you go. I Past uh, tense. leaned back. Had. Yeah. Because that was a while ago. He's, tight. He's, always, he's always bringing up old shit. But I was <laughs> sitting in the chair, and I leaned back a bit, and I fell on top of his crutch, and it broke. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The, iron, the ironic part about this, I called him over to help me because they told me, don't be alone. 
you know, for 24, 48 hours mm -hmm. to watch me. So he took it literally, don't do anything for 48 hours and broke my crutch so I can't walk anywhere. Is that like parental <laughs> abuse or something? <laughs> that's what I think it is. Could it be? It, 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 no, no, that's just my balance. <laughs> that balance, hella off. I mean, it's, it's a little sus. <laughs> <laughs> like just trying to sabotage my father. I, well, the next three days, like three, like two days after, we went. I went with him to West Hollywood to go, to pick, go pick up his crutch. Yeah, we had to go. Go pick up his new crutches. And guess who had to drive with one foot? Not my right foot, my left foot. Yes. You, you drove with yes. a broken foot? Yeah. Because you know you why? Made, you made him drive? No, you know why? Hmm. I don't, go ahead. Oh, I haven't driven in like 11 years. You haven't driven in 11 years? Mm -hmm. So you don't have a license, I'm guessing? No. No, I have a license. You just don't like driving? Uh, I get uh, anxiety and oh. I, I technically, I technically have PTSD. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. I mean, not nice that you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, cool. I, mean, I don't yeah, understand. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> I don't understand. It's expensive, but yeah. Yeah, good for you for reporting it. I don't understand how he has PTSD, but and but he gets in the car with me, or his sister, or his mom. I don't like having the control. <laughs> oh, no. but you'll give somebody bad control? Yes. Like me? Like me? Okay. Yeah, like I, I'd, I'd rather it not be my fault. Okay. That's gotcha. It. Well, I mean, if, if it makes you feel better, not that it should. I mean, not that it would. Uh, I was diagnosed with PTSD to the health issues in 2018. Uh huh. So just for, which is something that I did not know existed until 2018. Okay. Yeah. So for everybody listening, if you listen to the episode that I was in before, uh -huh. we talked about some of the health issues that I went through in my life. And when I was born, mm -hmm. I was born with a shut stomach, so I couldn't I couldn't eat, and they had to finally give me like real food because I, would, I wouldn't drink milk mm -hmm. to open up my stomach so it could start functioning. So that stays in your memory bank. And then with the other health issues that I had as an adult, your body is, that muscle reacts every time. Yeah. So having had cancer and all the other stuff that I went through, um, your body is in, it's always in like an alert. Mm -hmm. um, so every time a cold or fevers, mm -hmm. pain, Whatever, my, my body immediately goes into anxiety and panic attacks. That's fair. And so I was diagnosed with PTSD due to health issues in uh -huh. 2018, which I didn't know was a real thing. I, I laughed at my doctor. <laughs> and he was like, no, it's it's a real thing. Look it up. Yeah. And of course, I, I did. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Like, it's just not even like an actual reaction. It's just a reaction <laughs> just based off like the current scenario. You feel like you have an you have an issue and your body just shuts down. It's like, what the hell's happening? Yeah. 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 There, there's a stop. Mm -hmm. And sometimes my head immediately goes to, that's got to be cancer. Mm -hmm. that's, gotta, that's gotta be yeah. cancer. Like, like it's like, it, it, it immediately goes to the worst case scenario. And then you start, I, I, I don't know about the people, I start sweating, mm -hmm. tunnel vision, headache. Mm -hmm. Like I can't leave my house. It's one of those moments where like, I want to do everything and I can't do anything at the same time. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I don't know if that how it happens to you, but yeah, that's my. Yeah, yeah I get similar things like uh, tunnel vision for sure, which is not really something good to do when you drive. So yeah, yeah. I do. I have that. I just drive. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, you're supposed to like close my eyes sometimes. Gosh, Check your surroundings. <laughs> now he uh, wants to be in the room. Yeah, yeah. Around. Come on, help me out. Let me get to here. <laughs> Can find your PTSD too. <laughs> now nah, there you go. But it's interesting. So, but you do. How did you get into cards? And... How did I get into cards? Um, one of my friends was uh, or is a Wiccan, and uh, they were really into cards throughout high school, and I like. Kind of, like, did readings at school, and uh, I just, I've always been obsessed with cards, so I was like, because I played uh, the other card games, like Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, Poker, all that stuff for a good while now, too, so I just, I always felt like using cards as a way to understand people kind of was an interesting approach on how to do it, so I had researched tarot, card, tarot cards, and now I own... Six, seven decks. 
Oh, nice. Yeah, six seven different decks. And uh, I, I'm also like that kind of guy that doesn't like doing things half-assed. Like if I learn something, I, I got I got to I, I like keeping it as traditional or as uh, bare roots as possible. So fun fact, I, I actually have a paper, a college level paper on tarot cards, research, really? researching the, um, and I can't find the damn paper. Oh no! <laughs> I know, but it was a twenty-five page paper, like telling you the history of the cards, like um, from how it like originated with the Egyptians and like how the tarot card deck eventually evolved into the playing card deck and all that and um, how tarot cards re like they have uh, roots within like a lot of uh, ancient religious traditions like um, for example like uh, the Greek um, religions and also as rooted in Christianity as well so whenever people say like oh the cards are satanic that's they just don't really know. They just, they just say they're just saying that because that's kind of like the default of like oh, but it's low key, just a little bit of racism because they uh, are trying to discriminate against the Romanians and the because I against have like a gypsy culture. Yeah, I have a deck that's a Spanish deck. They call it a Spanish deck, but the original designs from what the studies that I, the research that. This particular style was used in Italian. The Italian aristocrats would use it for games, and then mm-hmm. certain people would use it to do the readings, and that's how it, it came to be. Like, mm-hmm. So there's a lot of really cool history. That I hope you find it. Yeah. I would love to like talk about that more. He probably forgot how he was looking for it. <laughs> He probably forgot that he was looking, he for, was it, looking for it, and now he'll remember. I'm going to go look for it again. Yeah. I'll start looking. No, because it's, it's in one of my older laptops mm. and it's broken oh. and I and I'm trying to find out if I could try to get away to maybe I can actually I might be able to contact my I, I talked to my old professor maybe she has the I could ask her yeah that would be really interesting because mm-hmm. I start I well during can, please don't judge me people during, me. Yeah, it. total judgment <laughs> when I was going through cancer and mm-hmm. I was going through treatment I would sleep all day because of the chemo and radiation. Mm -hmm. So I would be up all night going through pages and trying to find decks, unique decks. Mm -hmm. So I have about 40, 50 maybe now, decks of cards. Bragger. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So between Oracle cards and tarot cards, Mm -hmm. I have about 40 to 50 different decks Uh that I use. Crazy. I I think the main two that I use are... The right or right, of course. Yeah. It's the, the most basic one for people who don't understand tarot cards. And um, I had like a... I had a, the Deviant Moon deck. That was my first one, actually. Which is a, like a dark deck. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, another one I had to do the rituals for was like a, a voodoo tarot card deck. It was dope. It's cool, right? It, that one's cool as hell. Huh? I don't have that one. Yeah, no, 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 no. no one he's bragging now. No, 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 he's bragging. Yeah, yeah, no. But like, yeah. that was an interesting one. Like, it's like very unique, and like they put in like a lot of the voodoo culture into that one. So, it, and I had to research a whole different aspect on how to even birth the deck. Cool. Yeah. What's the difference between oracle deck and tarot card deck? So, tarot. You want? Well, you want to talk about tarot no. cards? I use. Oracle more. Go ahead. Oh, you can talk about the oracles. Okay, so <laughs> oracle cards, like my my cards would be considered oracle cards because they're not they're based on energy, but oracle cards don't have a specific number of cards. So you can find decks. I have decks that are only twenty four cards, and then I have these. These are seventy six, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, sure, let's go with that. No, these are fifty three. But I have a I have a bigger one at home, folks. Oh, and, uh, I'm bragging. I'm bragging. <laughs> there's a bigger one than this is at home. Uh, but there's ones that there's some there's 76 deck cards in the deck. So these don't follow um, a particular tradition. Like you can you can do it about anything. Like mine have words. 
I will say that some of them follow, will have similar things like love and hate or dreams or the chakras will be in some of the cards. This one has the chakras in there. Some of the words will be similar, but some of them will be totally off. So I have small decks and I have big decks, depending on the mood. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's all. Isn't that like all based off like the, the Greek oracles? Yeah. yeah. And, and But now, because most of them have already been done, mm -hmm. some of the more modern ones, the newer ones, are like very creative. And some of them talk about, I've seen some, I haven't bought them, but some of them have like the different pronouns, mm. um, sexual diversity. Like some get very like, and you're like, okay, that's... Like, like hella specific. <laughs> yeah. Like, you're who, like, like who are you marketing to at that point? Like I, unless I'm at a pride parade like how else am i going to use this yeah. deck so I, those i haven't bought but this is my favorite this one is a deck by sandra ann taylor mm -hmm. and i've had this deck for probably about 10 years now mm -hmm. and it's the energy oracle cards and i i, I love it in fact this is my second deck because the first one again got, got damaged you drop coffee on it i i think i did <laughs> and i probably did mm -hmm. it's usually coffee and stuff Okay, so fine. The, the, the stupid thing was that I had my, my I had a couple of decks in a bag, and I threw in my thermos with coffee. In, the, in fact, the one that I'm carrying right now, and it wasn't closed completely, mm -hmm. so it was a little duffel bag. When I got home, it was empty, and I was like, "Why is it empty?" Oh, because all the coffee in. Mm -hmm. So now several of my cards have coffee stains. Nice. Again, so it brings a little character. Yeah, you know, it makes it look antique. Yeah, <laughs> like, and, like, yeah. Like, yeah, like if it has the stain, then. The people that are like looking at the cards, like this guy's been, this guy's been doing from. He's lived. Yes. This guy is. This, this guy's he's got a wizard. Me. Or he's very messy. Mm -hmm. Well, we can go there, but why go there? <laughs> let's, let's go with with wise. Uh -huh. This guy is really wise. <laughs> uh, and and what's crazy is like the the deck that the first deck that we did the year deck, it was all stained on the reading side. It wasn't stained on the back side. Because if it was stained on the back side, it loses a lot of the integrity of the card. And the reason why having the cards are. But yes. uh, uh, very oddly enough that it was stained on the correct side, it, <laughs> it just gives it the perfect amount of character while keeping its credibility. Well, just so you know, I, I just did an interview photo shoot like three days ago. And they asked me to bring my deck so they could show it on TV and uh, I, just, again. I get bragging. to brag about bragging. my deck folks <laughs> yeah. and the guy is like he looked and I go don't judge it's stained like it's coffee mm -hmm. but he, and then I thought why didn't you bring in a new deck because I haven't printed I'm like no I want people to show that mm -hmm. budget like my life it's it's, it's not perfect mm -hmm. it's not perfect so anyway so tell them you you know more about Oracle I mean, tarot, uh, cards. tarot cards so like tarot cards specifically are the 52, well, actually 56 card deck with the major and lower arcana. So they usually have, um, they're kind of based off like the actual playing deck, which is like the four suits and 13 cards with the king, the queen, the jack, the ace up to 10. And then, uh, um, it also has like uh, the major and minor arcana, which is like the cards like, you know, the world or the devil or the hanged man. And uh, all those cards have certain meanings and uh, they've been around forever. But the other interesting thing about like the tarot cards is that it has the king, queen, jack, and a, an extra one called a page. So. It's kind of like where the other, like they, that's kind of where it kind of deviates, and they made they made it thirteen cards, so they could be more simplified in for a playing card thing. But um, a lot of the cards are they're very image based, and what the image like not every tarot card deck is supposed to mean the same thing. It's supposed to be based off who the illustrator is and the messages that they put in their card. And those are supposed to connect you to whatever messages or whatever your feelings are or whatever outside or inside energies are supposed to are influencing you at the moment. Because yeah. you can actually use a regular deck of playing cards 
for readings. Yeah. So, and this is what I have. I have a Spanish deck mm -hmm. that I use for readings. Yeah. And, and, and what I like about them is they're more specific about people mm -hmm. um, coming into your life or people in your life mm -hmm. on those decks. So, cool. Yeah. But yeah, all that stuff is... It, it, it's kind of like the cards are supposed to give you a message and you're supposed to be able to interpret it in a way. Like, you're supposed to have someone help you interpret how your life is feeling, past, present, future, and um, what obstacles are getting in your way and how uh, certain roadblocks in your life are going to affect your journey and how you could aff like change certain things in your life in order to improve on it. Yeah. yeah. Do you read for yourself? Um, I have always believed in the fact of reading for yourself is um, uh, we're always we always have a self bias, you know. So like uh, like when you read your own cards, you're like, oh well, of course. And that could that sort of bias kind of gets in the way of like the actual message of what you're supposed to do. So. I don't believe in reading for yourself because you always feel like you'll assume certain things that someone else would interpret in a different way because they're looking at you in an outside perspective. Yep. I, I only do it when I get a new deck. Mm -hmm. if I, when I take that plastic off, that very, very first shuffle and the mm -hmm. first layout, Yeah. I'll do that yeah. for me. Yeah, that's fair. And I also kind of do that just to see how, like, what's the energy that the cards are giving you, yeah. you know? It's like, yeah. So you can understand, like, Okay, this is like the general, like vibe that the cards are going for. Yeah. yeah. Do you go through them? Absolutely. Sort of. I always I mean, like to do that. I I I read it. I actually read the entire thing. Like I look I look at it in depth. I try to understand the ins and outs of the cards. I read, like if there's if like some of those uh like the voodoo tarot card deck in particular, it has like certain events in history that have happened and and uh like they all there's actually like a whole book on that deck that tells you like what um like what key historical voodoo figures did what and like Ooh. so that they get you into hella rabbit holes and i i whenever i'm looking at a deck i research if i see something that i've never seen before i, I have to research the whole thing to, in order to understand the ins and outs of it. I don't know. I'm, that, that's where I'm crazy if I can. Yeah. I'm not crazy. No. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you just play one on TV. <laughs> that's, okay, I, you, you got me all kinds of like, ooh, because I'm going to be in New Orleans at the end of January for mm -hmm. work, and they've asked, like, is there anything specific you want to do? And I'm like, I've, a ghost tour, hello, mm -hmm. of course. Ooh, if you're going, doing that, uh, there's a, there is a vampire tour. You should check that out. I'm more of a food person, so when I go to New Orleans, I eat food. I don't know about food. <laughs> yeah, duh. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not worried about. Gumbo. I'm not worried about vampires and food. I'm food. There's nothing I, like a good bowl of gumbo, uh, some beignets, and some coffee. Like that's my menu. To start off, but now you got me curious. I'm gonna have to look into it before. I, yeah. I mean, I've been to New Orleans before, but this time we're gonna have a night mm -hmm. to do adventure stuff yeah. instead of just work. Yeah. So now I'm curious. Yeah, but if you do the, you got to look at the vampire tour. It is dope. It tells you, they, uh, um, there's the guy that does it. He goes um, around like the, like bourbon, like the bourbon street and all, okay. like the, and tells you the historical places where uh, specific serial killers were and like uh, how they all specifically drank people's blood. It's crazy. And, uh, yeah, the the I know, right? <laughs> yeah, go there. There's serial killers. Yeah, but, tell them I sent you. Yeah, but, but no, it's it's so. But it's like just interesting, like how like people like um, how it connects to the more popular um, forms of like myths or like horror that we all see today, like the concept of a zombie stemmed from voodoo culture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. And like uh, the reason why people think vampires drink blood is because a lot of these, like a lot of past killers, used it like as a way to gain their energy. So, it, reading about it like kind of like puts a whole different perspective on how the outside world 
Forex. Yes. <laughs> see now, see now I'm going from interesting to crazy. <laughs> oh, no, going from. Yeah. <laughs> he was there about thirty minutes ago. We were already knocking on that door. Yeah. Now we just opened it up. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but you know, it's, it's, one of the coolest things about New Orleans, I used to live in Houston, so we would go to New Orleans a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's just about, it's a whole different culture. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole world in itself. And a lot of places in, in the States are like that. You you go into these areas and you're like, it's a story. But New Orleans really, from the food and the people and the and the way they, the, the accent or the way they speak the dialect. Or even it, just, the, just the buildings themselves. Yeah, it, it's, it's it, to walk into spaces Particularly when you're already connected to energy and have gifts, you walk into spaces and you're like, ooh, like I feel, I, ooh, like I feel it. Like, mm -hmm. like somebody just touched me. That was $20. And <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> can't be serious, can I? Mm -hmm. But it, it's, it's really unique. So for anybody listening, if you've never been to New Orleans, do yourself a favor. Just don't go in August or September because it's super hot. But, other than that, it's uh, going in August. Yeah, like <laughs> right in the middle of the summer, like it's like everything in your body sweats double. And but to, just do yourself a favor, go. But yes, Bourbon Street and bars are cool. But go, 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 fill up with the culture and the, the, the history. history. Yeah, yes. man, it is so cool. You come back going, I want to know more. Mm -hmm. The last time that I was there. Um, because my friends that I work with know about it. They were every every time we walked into a room, they're like, "Do you feel anything?" Yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, you annoy me." <laughs> but but it's really it's really mm -hmm. interesting. So yeah, I, I I feel like a like a field trip going coming up and <laughs> we, live from New Orleans. <laughs> to do it, you can you can um live it. You can live it. Yeah. So part okay. of your live thing, you can yeah. live it. I will. I will. You know. And then let the world know. When yeah. once this. Once your show is like super uber famous, yeah, well, we have that. He's gonna he's piggyback off of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're trying to piggyback off of you. You're supposed yeah. to be famous and then get us famous. Oh, yeah. is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. That's... yeah, yeah. Unlu unluckily, there was no social media in my twenties <laughs> and thirties, yeah. or by now I would have had a Kardashian career. Uh, uh, yeah, that's that's. Still in the black, folks. Not, the not too late. Not too late. Not too late. Not too late. <laughs> <laughs> it's never too late. <laughs> Look for the video coming up next. Yeah, I think we'll be good. I can produce it. Jenny, Jenny Garza. <laughs> I have to change my name to Bambi or something. Okay. I like it. I like it. All right, everybody. That was a little different. Yeah. Well, I, was, I was over here. Um, that was 40 yeah, so, minutes. It's crazy. Yeah, it was. So that's what uh, Danny does. That's some, one of the uh, many things that Danny does. What was yeah. the thing I said? Danny... Danny of all trades. That's a Danny, Danny of all trades. Danny of all trades. <laughs> that's like a whole new series. Yeah, that's, like, that's, like, yeah, that's part of Danny. Um, yeah, Danny of all trades. So. Yeah, I hope you guys liked it. Um, Jordan, Danny, G Garza. Gotta have his whole name because there's more Danny Garza. If you don't there. see the G, yeah, it's not, not me. <laughs> <laughs> and me. So, yeah, look for us on all our platforms. I like, subscribe. Jordan, anything to say? No. You let it all out? Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I, could, I, could, I could probably go on. <laughs> yeah. the, the issue is, is if I keep talking, we might have like a, a just a, an I, extra podcast. I have to get a whole new um, hard drive? Yeah. Because? Okay. <laughs> all right. Thanks, everybody. We're out. Jesus. <laughs> all right, everybody. Welcome to 24-7.